this example demonstrates uh, how you can write a function plotter. Um, this example starts with uh, the simple case where we have um, a function like a variation of sine here with uh, the uh, frequency that changes over time and um, this whole component is uh, uh, the component where you uh, enter functions. So now let's look at the source code. Um, it is a component that's, that's been implemented uh, in the project. So you can find a predefined uh, user function component that comes with the VRL, but it's pre-compiled, so you don't get a, a uh, code icon. Um, but in this project, we added a custom one just to uh, be able to show you um, how to customize uh, the function evaluation. And um, as you can see, we have uh, three methods here one get function 1d get function 2d and get function 3d and all of them have um, special param uh, info annotations um, we can rename the variable names here and um, this uh, groovy function is actually a very powerful thing. Um, it lets you evaluate uh, functions defined in the Groovy language so you can use uh, all uh, uh, static methods you find in the Java Lang math package but you could also add your own so maybe yeah you just yeah you just could write your own plugin and add some some fancy stuff that's not uh, uh, available through uh, the standard uh, um, API you could involve external data and and stuff like that so um, there are basically no limits uh, how you extend this um, you can uh, actually also derive this uh, um, Groovy function uh, class and the corresponding uh, type representations. Um, so uh, feel free to 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 add your own uh, custom uh, function uh, input fields. Okay, um, that was uh, the user function component. Now here we have a component called function evaluator. It just evaluates uh, the function. We just briefly look at the source code. Uh, nothing special here. We have a trajectory object. Um, then we have a loop where we add a trajectory uh, points to the trajectory and uh, then we return it. So that's basically it. So there are many possible implementations. Uh, the one you see here shouldn't be used for uh, um, numerical algorithms because it, it doesn't always ensure uh, that it uh, um, evaluates really the whole interval and so on. So uh, be careful with it. Um, but still um, I think it's it's um, a good example on, on how to easily evaluate uh, functions and and plot them afterwards. Okay, here uh, there are some some uh, special inputs. This one is uh, a label, a label for uh, the plot actually, and then we have um, our uh, um, starting point of the interval. So we start at zero, and in this case, um, it's called t zero, and then we have t n, and we stop at ten, and our resolution is uh, zero point one. Okay, and then we have the trajectory plotter. As you can see, uh, this is a predefined component. It comes from a plugin, and um, it's this uh, J free chart um, plugin. Um, it just integrates uh, the the well-known J free chart library into VRL. 
and here is a predefined plotter. You can also uh, define your own plotters that use different uh, plotting uh, capabilities from JFreeChart. You can do that either in your VRL project or also through a custom plugin that's based on um, uh, JFreeChart. Okay, so I click uh, Invoke in the trajectory plotter and then you get this nice plot. You can resize it. It's fully interactive. You can even zoom into specific parts. Um, and what you can also do is um, you can export this thing by right-clicking and then just say export and, and then save it as PDF or whatever. Um, yeah, what's also possible is to compare different evaluations. So uh, for this, um, we just right-click on the function evaluator and we say, we click on new instance here. Okay, and then we move it down and uh, uh, to add another uh, trajectory we just click on this plus uh, button here and then another trajectory input appears. We drag a connection between function evaluator and this uh, input Okay, so uh, now let's give it the same function. Okay, um, basically we can leave these fields but we want to evaluate at a different, uh, completely inappropriate uh, resolution. Maybe we choose just, just one uh, to see that there is a difference. And we call this um, label 2. Okay, all we have to do is click invoke now and what we get is another plot. You see it, it, it really nicely shows both uh, trajectories with uh, their label. It automatically chooses some color for us and here you clearly see that uh, the evaluations are, are uh, totally different. Okay, that's basically it. Um, instead of using the function evaluator, you could also uh, load data and, and plot the data or, or manipulate data and compare it to the original. You can also integrate uh, workflows uh, that you'd uh, traditionally implement with uh, Bash, Perl or or stuff like that. And I really encourage you to do so because um, this environment here is really platform independent. And um, in most cases, when you uh, when you uh, use Bash scripts or Perl, then you interact with different applications like Nuplot or or specific libraries that you have to add and compile and all that. And it really takes time to take this workflow from one computer to another one, even if it's the same operating system and if it's your own computer. It, it really takes time. So um, and in this case, when you uh, just when you use the plugin system, everything is handled automatically. You just send one file uh, to a colleague and then uh, he can or she can open uh, the file and if plugins are not installed, they are bundled uh, within the file and then uh, um, they get notified that plugins will be installed and that's it. So you have to do the work as well if you want to integrate um, different uh, libraries but you only have to do it once and it will run on Linux, Mac and Windows.